What's up guys, Smalls here with 9 5 mac and today we're gonna to be checking out the new Magic Keyboards from Apple. Apple isn't calling these new keyboards the Magic Keyboard 3, but that's essentially what we're dealing with here. Although there are really only a few key differences between this model and the generations prior. But the major feature here, of course, is the Touch ID button. As far as what you've got in the box, it's pretty minimal. You've got the Magic Keyboard itself, some documentation, and then the real prize is that braided lightning to type C cable. This is the same cable you'll get in the box with the M1 iMac that's shipping right now. Technically, these keyboards aren't really new. These keyboards come standard with the 24 inch M1 iMac that I reviewed here on the channel. But up until last week, buying that new M1 iMac was the only way you could get access to these keyboards. And if you want these keyboards in different colors, then buying the M1 iMac is still the only way you can get these new Magic Keyboards. And I'm honestly curious as to why Apple decided to not offer these keyboards standalone with the same color options as you got with the iMac. Like what happens if you've got an M1 iMac and the keyboard breaks after the warranty expires? Maybe there is a way you could get a replacement in the same color that I'm just not aware of, but for anyone who just wants to buy one of those colored keyboards, you're essentially out of luck. But I am gonna hold out hope for a space gray option to come out sometime in the future, hopefully. Please. Just to cover all the differences, there are technically three versions of this new keyboard being offered. For $99, you've got the standard Magic Keyboard without the Touch ID button, and this is what you receive with the base model iMac. And then for $149, there's the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, and this is what you'll receive with the higher end iMac M1 specs. And then for $179, you've got the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and the numeric keypad. They didn't create a new version of the larger Magic Keyboard without Touch ID, so anyone who wants the keypad but doesn't want Touch ID, we'll just be buying the Legacy Magic Keyboard for $129. As far as the differences between this keyboard and the previous generation, there are only really a few outside of that Touch ID button. You've got these more rounded edges to match the new Apple aesthetic that Apple's pretty much moving towards with all their new products, and then some buttons have been replaced with some new controls. Where the launch pad button used to be on the previous generation, you've now got a spotlight search button. And whereas the F5 button on the previous gen didn't have any shortcut, you've now got a microphone button that'll act activate Siri by default. Not something I'll probably ever use, but it's there. And then where the F6 button on the previous gen was also shortcutless, you've now got a do not disturb shortcut, which is super convenient. Lastly, you've got a new shortcut on the FN key that brings up the emoji menu. And if you've got the magic keyboard without the touch ID button, then that'll also serve as your lock key. And if you have the keyboard without touch ID, the lock key will replace the eject button. And this makes sense because most people aren't ejecting a whole lot of discs these days. But outside of all of that, these are the only real differences between this keyboard in the previous gen. Not a whole lot of major changes, just slightly modernizing some of the controls and shortcuts. The Touch ID button is the primary reason that most Mac users will be trying to pick this up, but you should know that Touch ID functionality at this time is only compatible with M1 Mac models. So the M1 MacBook Air, M1 MacBook Pro, M1 Mac Mini, and the M1 iMac will all work with these keyboards, no problem. But everyone else is out of luck, unfortunately. So please, please do not buy this Touch ID keyboard if you don't have an M1 powered Mac already because it's not gonna work. And that includes the iPad Pro, even the M1 iPad Pro, Touch ID is not gonna work. As far as the setup process for Touch ID itself, there isn't a whole lot to it. It works extremely well as advertised, but there are a few things I noticed. Firstly, for MacBook users, if you've already got a fingerprint setup in the Touch ID menu for the built-in keyboard, then there's no setup process for using Touch ID on this keyboard outside of just connecting it via Bluetooth. When I paired the keyboard with the MacBook Air, I was pretty much all good to go after making the initial connection. For iMac and Mac mini users, keep in mind that there may be a software update required for that Touch ID setup menu to fully appear in the system preferences. I actually had to update my Mac Mini to Big Sur version 11.5.2 before that Touch ID setup menu appeared in its full form, so just keep that in mind. A part of the setup process for Mac desktops requires a double tapping of the power button before adding your fingerprint, and the process of adding your fingerprint is just like what you've got on the iPhone, and once it's set up, you can choose in the system preferences what you wanna use your fingerprint to be used for. And as I said before, the Touch ID button also serves as your lock key, so a full press will lock your Mac and you simply have to rest your finger on the sensor to unlock it again. When comparing the speed of this button versus the button built into the MacBooks, you can definitely tell the difference. For a wireless sensor, it isn't slow by any means, but compared to the built-in button in the MacBooks, it's definitely slower enough for you to realize that you're waiting for it to unlock. But overall, these keyboards work very well and as advertised. And if you want the most Apple-focused keyboard with the Touch ID button, well, they're 
aren't really a whole lot of other options, are there? If you're interested in checking these keyboards out, they will be linked in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.